That is soaked. Yeah, a little bit wet. Last time on Abandoned Comfort. We showed you that with a lot of perseverance and constant scouring of Craigslist that you too can own a blue water boat without paying an arm and a leg. Or, in this case, not paying at all. We also got Rue underway for his first ever offshore passage. Let's say that's the mother load right there. I'm just a little bit wet. <laughs> so my hand is behind. What they got there, fiberglass and paint. And that's where this soaking wet wood used to be. So I'm gonna chip away and essentially dig that out from right there. And that should give us a better look at what we're dealing with. But I'm assuming it's just gonna look like this. Clean it up, put new pieces of wood in here, glass over them, new support made. It sounds so easy, but you know this project's gonna take a while. No, anything with wood <laughs> that doesn't involve power tools, I somewhat <laughs> enjoy. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, we'll see. I might be able to get this one done relatively quickly. But you guys what's, know. What's relative? I like to keep it very vague and broad. I don't, I don't like to pigeonhole myself like that. Oh, come over here and look at this. Yeah, that's a lot of water. Eh. Imagine doing this while the boat's in the water. I'd be freaking out right now. That was me. So he was gonna go through the charts one day when I was working still full time. And I come home, he's gone somewhere. And half of this is dug out. And I look in the trash and there's just all this wet, wet wood. wood. I think I left you a note or something. No, you didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I called him and he's like, oh, yeah, did you find that? I did it on purpose. Uh, I to freak you out. Yeah. Because it is scary. I mean, you look here and you're like, I'm below the water line. Where the hell is this water getting in? Because this is like really wet. But I am like 99% sure that it just comes down through the chain plate and the poor light and then it sits on top of this exposed wood like this has. The top is exposed right there. Yeah. And it soaks it. Before it looked like this. And then I came in and I like pushed on it and the whole thing fell in. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, what is going on here? So yeah. here it is. Mm -hmm. Now this guy's just gonna get rebuilt. All right, let's get this finished up. Yep. Looks way better. Yeah, as you can see, it's all, all tore up. So now all it is, I'm gonna cut that down a little bit, make yep. it more square. Get it all off. Well, it's basically gonna be a glass. fat U shaped. Yeah. And it just hugs the beam. Yep. So we're just gonna cut around here and then it holds it up too underneath. Much better not having soaking wet wood. All right, end of that project. It's not end of the project, end of ripping up. End yeah. of part one. Part two. To be continued. All right, guys. Today is the day. Well, not the day, but the day that we start sanding. The beautiful noise you hear in the background, that's gonna be us very shortly. So, I'm gonna be taping off around the boot stripe right now to make sure we don't get that when we're sanding, and then we'll be all set when we start painting again, too. All right, let's get going. Monitoring my work. See how good I'm doing? Yeah? I think I'm doing pretty good. All right, boot stripe is all taped up. So now the fun starts. This is what $50 every month looks like when they clean the bottom. Yeah, they really cleaned it, clearly. Some nice hard growth going on right here. So this is where I'm gonna be starting today. Grinding all these guys down. You kept the money in your pocket. You got a great man and you smile. You know exactly what I'm thinking. It doesn't bother me at all. Oh no. I'm finally done editing. So I can finally come down and get started on this fun business. I'll show you the beast that I'm gonna be working with. Just kidding. That beast. That's a belt sanded monster. Kelsey's using like an orbital right now. 
And luckily we don't have to get the boat down to the gel coat, but there are some troublesome areas that I want to get down to the gel coat and check out. So I'll show you them. First one's right here. This is where the depth sounder is. You can kind of see the circle around it. But it looks like Jim like filled it in with some sort of putty. So I want to clear that all out and then we can go ahead and reseal it. And the next one is the rudder. Looks like this is a layer of epoxy that's just kind of coated on top of the paint. It looks terrible. So I want to get this down. We're potentially just going to do like a mini rudder refit, honestly. So we got that and then we got like some cracks around here. And I'm not too huge on. And I'll show you the other side as well. Yeah, so you can see again. Kind of looks like it's just maybe a fiberglass mat. Oh, we got a couple different cracks here that I want to get behind and see what the heck is actually going on with the rudder. So we're going to strip that down. And then we'll see what's going on with it. Kels is using. 80 grit for everything else. Not taking everything down to the, the gel coat, but like I said, just the two troublesome areas. So, let's get on it. Tell us what I found on the rudder. <laughs> this is my five minute break to eat for the day. But, cracks right in here, and you can see the fiberglass right there. And it looks like this is metal. So we got metal there, yeah. and then like, either a layer of very thick barrier coat, or fiberglass layer. I think it's fiberglass because you can kind of see right there. So it looks like Jim might have done some repairs on it. However, I saw some cracks uh, outside of the anti fouling, so I was like, right, I really want to get down to the gel coat to see what we're dealing with. And it looks like the, the gel coat is cracking away from the bronze. Right here. Right there. And also right there. Right there. Getting all those barnacles off that I started. takes like maybe a 25th of the time that it does under water. So much more satisfying. Yep, but we'll be done the we'll be done the starboard side. It took a lot longer than I had anticipated with the rudder. But I'm happy that I brought it down to the gel coat in the areas that we wanted to. Yep. So we could see what the heck is actually going on. Alright, my five minute breakfast, lunch, dinner break is over. I get to put my gear back on and finish. I'm almost done with the starboard side and then port I'm side. I'm finishing that up, Kels. All right. <laughs> Currently have the car lights on. Finish up this bad boy. Whew. Wasn't too bad. It really wasn't. I liked it. It was you know, a good we, experience. We to, yeah, we didn't have to bring it down to the gel coat, so it's yeah. not as bad as like most people's first experience, but we yeah. put it down. We're done pretty low. Yep. Lower than we needed to. I think if I had to go to the gel coat and everything, I would be hating this a lot more, but we did pretty good. Went quick. I'll just get some of the trouble areas tomorrow morning and we'll probably rinse this bad boy down. <laughs> and yeah, we are done. I'm gonna finish working on the sanding and then we'll be done, finally. Just gotta do some last minute spots. While I'm doing that, Ryan, what are you doing back here? Getting rid of some stuff that we don't really ever need. We need to make some room for provisioning and then just reduce the overall weight of the boat. That'd be nice to not have a 20,000 pound boat. Yeah, that'd be nice. Maybe like 19,000 pounds. <laughs> we have a lot of extra stuff as always, and as the years go on, we understand what is on board more. So we realize that we don't need all of these things, or they don't go to our boat, or this one's broken, but we have two new new ones. Yep. So, going through all of it. All right, I'm gonna finish sanding, then on to the next project. Kelsey is like right there sanding now. <laughs> So the last time I found this water soak wood thing, I had to run, I think, to Starbucks or like a co-work to finish editing the episode and upload it. And Kelsey wasn't back from work yet. So I just left it like wide open. It was up on the, the port settee and she could just see like wet wood on the interior of the boat along the hole. I was just like, what the heck is this? I knew what it was because I found it. Probably gonna do the same thing to her here. 
I'm gonna leave this out. The wet wood chunks that I found, but the good thing is, once you get behind that wood, where the shaft enters and goes outside, that's solid glass. I'm pretty sure that's like directly on the hull. So if it is, that's that's almost an inch of fiberglass because, I mean, these hulls are so thick. I don't really know what the wood's purpose served was. I'm gonna ask the owner's group and see if they can tell me. Well, I am definitely not done with that wet area by the prop shaft, but you guys see this blank piece of wood here? That's where the really old not functioning diesel heater was. So I have had it on my list now for a while to add pretty much engine starting and pretty much how to like run the boat without me here instructions for Kels. Just so if anything ever happened, people go into crazy states of shock and they can't function when shit hits the fan. She can come in here and just read everything that's right here and she'll know exactly how to run the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to this blank canvas, this piece of wood. It's all there now. Well, couldn't get the board down from the wall, so I had to reach across the engine and write it, so it kind of looks like it's either a high schooler's note to a girlfriend, or just a really drunken sailor wrote it, so I guess we'll just go with the latter. So that is done. Kelsey is finishing up sanding right now, and then I'll give her the good news of some more wet wood inside the boat. This guy has been snuggling with me. Well, I've been writing it, trying to join me in the engine room. There's not even room for me. Me plus a 15 pound dog. I mean, yeah, we could fit him, but you don't want to be in here, buddy. I'm done. I'm done, Ruth. What have you found? More wet wood. Was it a better surprise this time than the last time? Yeah, because we're not in the water. It is like a plywood. You can kind of see the glass on top right here. It's like a epoxy paint. That's how we were describing it before. That's what it looks like to me. It looks but. like a plywood. I don't know what to do with these areas. They drive me crazy. They're not doing anything, but the previous owner, he was doing something back here and he spilled like battery acid. I don't know what he spilled. He spilled something and ended up causing this big black stain all in here. And this it drives is me usually crazy. covered yep. though because. My mattress. <laughs> yeah, we did a checkup on the mattress and everything checked out. Looks good. But of course, I found something that doesn't check out. Yeah. It is a lot scarier than moldy mattresses. Well, the mattress is doing wonderful. Made it through the summer, made it through Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma, even though we have a leaky port light by, right by it. Did good. Proud of her. Okay, so this thing that looks like a pile of dirt about half of what was in there. All right. uh, dirt wood. Dirt wood, yep. It's very well known in our boat. Dirt wood.